In today's video, we're going to show you how to use Renaissance wax to protect the exterior of your bagpipes. Stay tuned. Well, hello everybody, I'm Matt Willis Bagpiper, and on this channel I make videos to make you a stronger and more confident piper. If you like this kind of content, please think about liking the video and subscribing to the channel, commenting below with any thoughts you have, and you know, all that stuff. I also give Skype lessons if you want more personalized instruction, but more on that later. In a previous video, I discussed the oiling of your bagpipes to make sure that they um, can last and last, that you're a steward of your instrument for other musicians moving forward. I also talk about protecting the exterior. Now, one of the products that I've heard a lot about but have not experienced personally is Renaissance Wax, and I bought the Jumbo container. This is going to last me, ooh, a lot of bagpipes. Um, it comes in smaller containers. I've heard about this stuff for years, and I thought it was finally time to apply it. So I haven't really used this stuff on anything yet. Um, so we're going to have a go on it today and see how it goes. i got a cup of black coffee here, and we're going to spice it up just a little bit for today's video. Um, I've called this my Canadian Noir before. I'm going to add just a splash of the Canadian Club, but I'm also going to add some simple syrup with a cinnamon stick in it. Splash of that in the coffee as well. And it'll give you that cinnamon flavor without all of the powderiness because it doesn't want to dissolve in a drink. Oh man, that's like a cinnamon roll and a cup of coffee all mixed together. Cinnamon Canadian Swirl, maybe that's a name for it. All right, we're gonna dive right on into the real stuff now. Here I have three different bagpipes. I have um, the bottom section of my Robbie's which has a very smooth and already shiny finish on it. And there'll be a photo showing the before waxing uh, look of this particular instrument. I also have here my Heritage set of Hendersons from 2018, and this one has a slightly less glossy finish. It, I don't know if it shows up on camera any different. Again, there'll be a photo up. We're going to see if this wax shines up these mounts any, or if it really does just add a layer of protection while keeping the finish looking the same. And then finally, I have this half size or three-quarter size bagpipe of unknown origin because there's no name on it, um, but it's fantastic. I mean, this is the base bottom. Isn't that adorable? It's so cute. Um, this one actually has varnish on the outside of it, and we are going to put that on as well. So again, before photo, and we'll take a look at some after photos. We're going to wax each one of these a few times. Uh, in some of the directions I was looking at, it was recommended for wood that you wax it three times. So I'm going to wax each one of these three times. One of the things I want to test today is to see if this Renaissance wax makes these instruments more hydrophobic where the water will bead up kind of like a freshly waxed car or if it doesn't really change the properties. I don't want to get the pieces wet that we're going to actually be waxing but luckily it's a bagpipe there's lots of components so I have another part of each bagpipe right here. Let's go ahead and take that drone right out. I got a bowl right here and I have some water and I'm just going to again I do not recommend this this is a test I'm doing I'm willing to take the chances don't do this with your bagpipe let me do this for mine and I'm just going to see how the water responds to an unwaxed piece. So it's sheeting off almost entirely. I don't know if you can really even see that. Um, not much beading at all on the Henderson piece. We're going to go ahead and grab a paper towel and dry that off. I'm not interested in actually making my instrument wet. Now let's try it on this Robbie right here and see if it beads or sheets or what it does. A little bit of beading. It's still more sheeting. A little bit of beading of water on there. We'll see if there's any more beading or less beading after the waxing again. And now I'm going to dry it off. And then finally, there's the stock that goes with this lovely tiny little thing. Um, let's see what this does. This one with the varnish, this is a varnished piece. This one by far has the most beading of water on there. Again, I know it's black. It's probably hard to show up, but that one definitely um, was the most hydrophobic of these three. So most hydrophobic before waxing, the Robbie's came in the second most, uh, and then the Henderson was third in the hydrophobic beating of water test. All right, let's get on to some waxing. I have some super soft swabs here, and we're going to be using those, but we're also 
I also have a microfiber towel. This is from Costco, uh, low cost, very soft. If this doesn't have enough nap to get into the combing and beading, we might have to use this towel right here to get that out. Okay, so let's start with the Henderson. Whew. That stuff has an aroma. This is, um, if you've done oil painting, it's got a linseed oil kind of smell to it. So uh, I'm probably gonna be opening a window here shortly, but uh, let's see how it applies. So the directions state, apply sparingly with a soft cloth and buff gently. Dries hard instantly, resists spillage, does not show finger marks. All right. We're also gonna see if it does anything for polishing up the metal or if it just stays like it is. This one's pretty shiny, but there's a bit of tarnishing on it. Okay, so I'm gonna apply sparingly, whatever that might mean. I got just a little dollop on the edge of this and I'm just gonna kinda apply. I'm kinda buffing, starting with the satin wood mount. I can definitely see it going on. It's kinda giving it a more matted finish. Go ahead and apply some on the, the metal. Go down for the combing and beading. Definitely get the underside of this mount as well. I almost certainly grabbed too much product right there. But we'll see how it spreads in this combing and beading. It's very soft. Yeah, the combing and beading kind of eats it up a little bit. So I'm new to this myself. So if you have different application techniques, please comment below with uh, how you go about doing it. And now I'm just kind of taking a look at it to make sure I got everything because it kind of, it's a bit hazy. You can kind of see where it's applied and where it hasn't. All right, so this is the application one. I'm going to go ahead and put the lid back on because it's, it's stinky. So be aware. It's not necessarily the worst smell, but it, it does have an aroma. All right. Oh, that's definitely coming out much shinier. Can you see that? Wow. That looks great. What's it doing to the, the mounts themselves? Doesn't seem to be changing the slight patina that's on the metal, which can be a benefit. If you have a, some metal work that you want to protect and possibly not make shiny, you like how it looks, this might be a good product for you. I might see if I have a, yeah, I got my McClellan channer here and you can tell that's not perfectly shiny. We're gonna apply it on this as well here in a minute and see if it shines that up or if it just protects it and leaves that lovely patina on it that it has. So as I feared, some of the stuff in the combing and beading is not coming out readily. I mean, it's combing and beading. So this is a fairly, got a pretty good nap to the microfiber. So we're gonna grab this and kind of double it up on itself and it's nice and soft. And I can tell it's getting a little gunk out of the grooves. So I can tell it's getting in there, which is good, which is what I'm wanting, because I want to get that wax out of there. The mount looks a little shinier for certain. At least this top section, which was a little smoother. The bottom section was always ever so slightly rougher. But I would say even it, it picked up a bit of a sheen, the waxed one. Try to look at the sheen on there and the the unwaxed one, yeah, they're pretty similar. So it didn't do much to change the look of the satin wood, which is good. It's satin wood, it's not supposed to be overly shiny. Moving on to the Robbies. These are made by Dunbar. They have a smoother finish uh, than the uh, R.G. Hardy Henderson brand here, where the combing and beading, I think, is a little bit deeper. Um, this is a little bit smoother. Again, not plastic. It's just super dark wood. Uh, a McCallum set of pipes has a very similar kind of feel to the outside as well. So... For what that's worth, go ahead and apply some of the Renaissance wax to these. Hit the imitation ivory. I know it's plastic, but why not? It's right there. Trying to make sure I'm getting pretty good coverage into the combing and beading as well, not just on the outside of the combs, but into the combs. Maybe adding more than I should, but to make sure that it's getting into the grooves and all of the grooves, uh, I'm wanting to make sure I'm applying enough. And that's a lot of surface area if you think about it. It's in and out, in and out. Top of the pin, bottom of the section. I can tell that it's instantly hardened, as they say, on the pin. I don't know if you can see the white. It's definitely got a uh, 
coating on there. We're gonna actually let that sit on there for just a moment for what I applied on the bottom to make sure that it is, uh, I don't necessarily want it super hard, but it's still actually glossy. It hasn't started in any way uh, looking like it's doing whatever wax does when it starts getting hard. So go ahead, take this application thing, and we're going to apply it to the varnished mini pipe here. Oh, the look of a varnished pipe. I kind of miss it. I believe Duncan Souter is still varnishing his, but uh, seems to be a, a dying art. I was told that perhaps there were some chemicals involved that weren't too good for the people applying them. I don't know if that's true or not. If you do, please comment below if you know why pipes are not varnished anymore, or if it's just a trend and people like the more matted look of the modern unvarnished pipe. Okay, so we got this one all waxed up. We're gonna go straight away into, well, closing the wax up because it's kind of stinky. And I'm gonna just use this towel with the combing and beading. It, it's clear these are great for applying, um, but it's not working so well for the removal. So we're gonna just move on. And from one article I read about uh, this Renaissance wax that talked about the, you wanna apply it three times. They said that should last 15 years on a piece of wood. Um, I think we put our instruments through a little bit more than a normal piece of furniture, so I don't know if that would be true, but that sounds like a lot of protection. But does it feel different? There's definitely a textural feel. I mean, there's something that's on here, and I can tell there's still just a little bit needs to be removed. Similar, but I would say this one is ever so slightly slipperier. Not in a bad way. It's still combed and beaded, so you still got plenty of grooves to, to grab with. Okay, let's see. How's it coming out of these grooves here? It, I might let it dry a little too long in a couple of these grooves. I'm seeing it white and chalky in just a couple. So I'm just using my fingernail and kind of going in and that's taking that out. All right, let's remove the wax from this section. This guy is so adorable. It plays really nicely in B flat with its original chanter. It's, it's not dissimilar in tone from a set of real pipes that you can get from McCallum and Fred Morrison. It is though, however, in B flat rather than A, so that's kind of interesting. Maybe I'll do a review of these. They're not in a bag at the moment, so I can't actually fire them all up at one time. Waxing the varnish is super easy. That came off quite easily, quite well. And again, I don't know if it's gonna show up on camera, unwaxed and waxed. I can see in, in person, the, the wax really kind of brings an extra level of pop and bling to the varnish that the unwaxed varnish just doesn't quite have. It's subtle, but there definitely is a difference. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and wax these sections each two more times so they have three layers of this wax on it, and then we're gonna do another water test and see how they come out. The second coat of wax has been applied and removed from all of the sections, and I'm still working on the Robbies just a bit to get some of that dried wax out. The other ones I have not let sit on there as long, uh, and it, they didn't have this problem. I'm going to recommend that you don't really wait with the combing and beating. You put it on, give it just a beat or two, and then go in and remove. It's coming off easily enough with my fingernail and the grooves, but there's a lot of grooves along the section, so it's taking a little bit of time. You could also use a toothpick if you wanted to. Don't dig in too hard. I'm not trying to scratch anything, but if you really need to get a little bit of extra wax out and uh, you either don't have fingernails or your fingernails are getting tired, you could use a, a toothpick. Have several ready. Keep it nice and kind of sharp so you're not having to press too hard. It looks like it might be getting ever so slightly lighter in color. Again, I can definitely see a bit more of the wood grain now. So again, why would you wax your bagpipe. Well, I talked about it in the previous video I did about oiling your pipes. But the idea is that you want to try to basically trap as much of the oil inside the wood as you can. And the wax on the outside is gonna go a long way to help protect the exterior. The oil of the instrument is filling all of the wood grain and all of the pores of the wood the less water vapor can get in there and move things about and muck it up. So oil on the inside, some sort of protected wax on the outside. And this Renaissance wax is readily available from lots of places. Just look up Renaissance wax. You can find a place to buy it. This is the 200 milliliter version. I'm applying a little bit more of it than I expected, maybe a little bit more than I need. I think there's a 65 milliliter. There's smaller ones that would probably do just fine. Um, but I actually don't regret getting this size. For one thing, I occasionally do work on other people's bagpipes and I could see offering 
a full wax treatment. I was just applying the second coat now, Mr. McFly. Sure you were, Biff. We're gonna test now if this is any more hydrophobic with several coats of wax on it than it was before. So again, this is my test. I'm not asking you to do it. I'm taking one for the team. Don't, don't just get your bagpipes wet. Lots more beating, lots more beating. Can you see, like, it's actually holding onto water. So this beating is showing that it's the water is really wanting to repel it. If I just shake it, almost all those beads kind of come off, but it's definitely behaving far differently with uh, the wax on there than before. So that's very interesting. And just a little bit on the mount itself. The mount still sheets more than beads, but that being said, there's a bead of water right there. So I don't think it was really beating much of anything before. So again, immediately drying this off. And that's kind of cool. It is, it is bone dry now. This is dry to the touch. There is no moisture on here. Well, a little bit right. There we go. There's no moisture on here at all. It's, that shows me that this wax is really actually doing something. It is behaving quite a bit differently. Let's see how it's doing on the Robbie. See all those beads? Where is the camera? Look at all that water on there. But again, a couple of shakes, and then you have even smaller beads. So it's really repelling that water. And again, just dry, completely dry. I think it definitely has a slightly different texture than the unwaxed one. I can tell this has done something. So. So far, I'm a fan. I'll be curious and I will follow up here in a while uh, about how this holds up long term. And then finally, the varnished mini pipe. Mini pipe varnish. Again, get it up to the camera. Lots of water beating. It's even dripping off. That said, I don't know. Well, it's not even micro beating of water on there now. So I don't know if it's behaving that much differently than it was just varnished, but it's definitely looking just absolutely gorgeous. I mean, this thing looks fantastic. It is so shiny. I mean, can, uh, look at that. There'll be photos so you can see it too. But holy cannoli, that is a good looking bagpipe right there. Finally, the test that uh, I talked about earlier. Let's see right now. I have some bronze right here. And this one, it's either gonna make it shiny or it's not. But you can see it's shiny-ish, but it's not like bright, bright yellow. This bronze, when it's polished up, looks just like brass. It's very, very bright colored. We bit of this stuff on here. Because I'd love for this to protect the slight patina this has. So it's applied. Let's just do the whole top. Kind of liking this stuff. I've heard about it for years. I don't know why I was hesitant to, to use it. I had another product I've used, but uh, this is more readily available. So we're gonna, I think, maybe go with this moving forward. So one of the things, it's it's still mostly, it's, it's a little shinier just because I think it's smoothing out the metal. But as I'm doing that, notice the cloth is not turning black from oxidation. Because a lot of these waxes kind of oxidize the outside layer of metal, then you kind of polish that off, which is why it all turns black. This isn't doing that. This is clearly just adding something to the outside layer. And I think the slight extra shine it has, has more to do with the protection that's now being offered to it than anything else. We'll see how that shine holds up. And kind of similar that I saw on the Robbies, I would say it slightly lightened the top to the point where I can see the wood grain a little bit better. This is a Coco Bolo top. So it does seem like it might make your metal slightly shinier. So you might want to test on the backside of like a stock ferrule or something if you have a lovely patina that you want to keep and see how it's responding. If it works well for you, then maybe try to do it on the rest of your pipes to protect the metal and keep it in its current state or just let it keep developing the patina. Do what works for you in your world. At the end of the video, there'll be before and after comparisons of the shots before they were waxed and after they were waxed and maybe even some of these pieces next to other parts from the same bagpipe so you can see them right next to each other all right everybody that's renaissance wax so i have a lot of work cut out for me now because i have to well wax the rest of three bagpipes but hey, i kind of enjoy this stuff so no big deal
My initial impression is very favorable. For now, I am giving this a recommended uh, thumbs up for the product. I don't see why it won't hold up long term. We'll see how the water beating holds up maybe after the next uh, rainy day parade I have to play. And if I have any thoughts along the way, I'll, I'll happily make a video. And if I do, it'll be pinned and carded somewhere right up there for you to check out. Well, thank you so much for watching, everybody. If you got something out of this video, please consider subscribing to the channel and maybe dropping me one of these and ringing that bell, all that stuff. It helps more than you know in supporting the channel. I also have a Patreon account for those that want to go the extra mile. As little as a dollar a month, well, helps fund things like me buying Renaissance Wax to try out. This was not sent to me by anybody. I, I bought this. So uh, Patreon, again, it's a, a monthly donation that uh, you make to the channel here, and it is greatly appreciated. If you want a more personalized instruction, I do give Skype lessons, and I'm now working with people all over the planet, so that's fantastic. Go ahead and head over to www.mattpiper.com or email me down here, uh, matt at mattpiper.com, and we'll get you going. Thank you guys so much, and until next time, cheers. <laughs>